Helene Spark came out with some huge news yesterday. We're going to talk about that. We've got some macro stuff we got to talk about. We're going to look at the money market funds since those are out. We're going to look at the margin debt since that is up. We're going to talk about bonds because the time is now. We're going to be looking at those things right now. Now, but before we get going, smash that like button, subscribe if you've been with us a while and haven't done so yet. Check out the Trade Cave store, link in the description as well as the channel bio. Let's get into it. First of all, let's talk about the yield curve inversion or uninversion rather. It uninverted here on the daily chart, which is the chart we wanted to see it unvert, uninvert last Thursday. So it's been a little over a week since it's uninverted. This has marked a recession pretty much every single time that it has done this. Every single time we've gotten the uninversion, it's become a countdown timer to a recession. When is that recession going to come? It could be you know, in a few months, it could be in a year or more, but we do know that it is now coming. It will likely happen sometime. Either um, if there's a big economic problem, it's gonna happen soon. If it's not a huge economic problem, it'll simmer underneath the surface until it becomes a huge economic problem, and then it will slap us in the face sometime, maybe in late 2025, just in time for that Bitcoin cycle. We'll see if it cooperates there or not, because we are expecting the market to get absolutely juiced by the U.S. presidential election, because everyone wants to get reelected, and everyone wants everyone to think that they're great. Uh, so we could be seeing that, and the Fed also is up for reassignment, I believe, in 2026. So they want to make the people that are going to be in power at that time pretty happy uh, since they are all up for election right now. And the way to keep them happy is to what to juice that market. So I don't know if we'll see a recession this year or uh, even in, you know, up to mid 2025, 20, early 2026, just because of those things, unless there is a serious break in the market, like in the economy that uh, is just uncontrollable, in which case that would be really, really bad. Uh, but yes, we are now counting down to a recession here on Trade Cave. All right. So that means some of our risk on assets are a little bit spooky right now. I'm not running away from any of them yet because I'm still on the cycle uh, for Bitcoin. I am still thinking Bitcoin is going to go up until I am proven wrong. Uh, I will continue to think that. All right, let's move on to the money market funds. We see that the money market funds, people are still scared. They're still pumping money uh, into the money market fun funds. You can see overall it increased by $23 billion from last week. Okay, uh, Retail increased it by about a uh, little over $6 billion dollars and institutional uh, increased it uh, closer to 20. So yeah, big, big deal there. That's, that's, a, that's still growing. So there's still fear here in the market. They're also trying to grasp that last bit of, you know, five and a half percent guaranteed money. Uh, let's take a look at uh, the margin uh, balances. Uh, these are still pretty low. Now this is all the way back to July. We don't have like the most up-to-date data on this. So our data is back to July. We are in September now, about halfway through it. So it's about uh, six weeks behind. So by the time we see this spike, we'll probably already be on our way down, but we should still have plenty of time to, uh, you know, get, get out of here before that happens. Um, yeah. So that's what we're looking at. We're looking at uh, the margin debt still in relatively uh, safe areas here right now. If we see it come up to this blue line, this red line, up to this blue line, or you know above that blue line like it did in 2008, that is time to be concerned. Even if it just barely peaks above it like it did in uh, you know 2022 before we had that big sell-off, that's also uh, a place to be concerned when it comes to the margin debt. All right, let's move on to CleanSpark. CleanSpark had huge news yesterday. They have... Um, their recent expansion has gone online. They increased their hash rate by 3.2 exahash yesterday. So they are, now they are over 26 exahash here now. That is amazing. That is fantastic uh, that they're doing that. So they're on track now to reach 37 exahash by the end of the year. That would put them uh, in competition, maybe even surpassing Mara, that might make CleanSpark the largest Bitcoin miner, uh, publicly traded Bitcoin miner. That is pretty cool. Now, I know we had that bad news the other week. I wish they would have waited on that and, and come out with this first. I would have been a lot less upset about their dilution if they were like, hey, look, we turned on a site and we got a whole bunch of extra hash and, you know, but also we're going to uh, increase the share count here next year. <laughs> like that would have been a le that would have made it an easier pill to swallow. So I am happy about this. Uh, again, I have been accumulating my clean spark in this area. I do think clean spark could double or more from the area it currently is, you know, in that under $10 region. I do think it could do that 
with relative ease. Again, because uh, that dil dilution that we talked about in the past is a future problem. It's not a right now problem. Okay, it's a future problem. Uh, so CleanSpark is still working with just under 300 million shares, which means you know they're not probably going to uh, increase that massively by Christmas. Uh, and unless they do, in which case I'd be excessively pissed off with them and probably sell out. Uh, but this is what I'm talking about. They are hitting their marks. They are staying on track. And this is exactly what I want to see to feel okay with their dilution. Uh, so this is one of those areas where I'd say they, they, they're getting A plus marks in terms of they are staying on top of it. They are hitting their marks as expected. Um, and that is great. They just can't have a misstep. That's all I'm saying about them, they can't have a misstep. And this is showing that currently at this time, they are not having a misstep. So I can maintain my confidence in holding this particular stock right now. So yeah, amazing. They're over 26 exahash right now. Let me see if that puts it here. Yeah, so they're over 26 exahash. Does it say exactly what it's at? And here's like 26 point, is it just 26 or is it like 26 point something? Uh, I don't see the exact, yeah, that's just a release of that and it's saying, that they're okay yeah it just says exceeds 26 doesn't say exactly what their hash rate is uh so that's great so they're over 26 exahash and uh, now this is exciting because now this is uh from august 2023 so over a year ago uh last year just a year ago clean spark was was hashing with just 9.3 exahash this is more than a double we're at 26 now 26 it's nearly tripled their exahash from last year. So that's one of the reasons that like sometimes the dilution is a little bit acceptable if they're able to keep doing this. If they can't keep doing this, then not so much. Then I'd be upset now. Um, I'm getting off of that now. <laughs> I'm just saying they, they got 26 X to hash. How did they react to this? Uh, so they've done nothing. They've done, they got 1.41%. Okay. They just basically made themselves the, the, the second largest publicly um, traded Bitcoin miner in terms of X hash ever uh, in the world right now. And they get a 1%. So exahash news isn't a big deal right now, especially when sentiment is low. But you better believe that this is going to return big time when we start seeing this breakout. And the breakout I'm looking for is this pennant right here. I'm looking for this pennant right there to break to the upside. And today we could get that tiny little poke above it. And then hopefully we get a gap up and go sometime by the end of next month. That would be fantastic here on CleanSpark, but I am feeling bullish about this again. I'm, I'm liking where this is. I have been accumulating under $10. I've nearly doubled my position in CleanSpark underneath $10. Why have I done that? Because I do think that it wouldn't, it's not too much of an ask to see CleanSpark get back into this range between $15 and $18. If we go to the upper range of that at $18, that's a doubling from where we currently are. I could sell all of the shares that I just doubled down with right now, or nearly doubled down with, and basically get my entire cost basis out of uh, the way, leaving everything left uh, in the house's money. So that is what I'm looking at trying to do with CleanSpark here. So I have been accumulating under $10. I'm still accumulating under $10. Uh, we are currently above the five-day EMA. That is good. I like to see it there. Uh, we're coming up on, I believe this is the 20-day. Um, we could find ourselves there uh, above that. And once we're above that, I'd be feeling even extra bullish on that. So let me go ahead and turn this off of my day trading setup and put it back to the ATRs to get trend. There we go. Boom. All right. So yeah, we've got room. Once we break this pennant, we got room all the way up to 1063. That's a pretty pretty nice gain that put me solidly back in the green on CleanSpark. We get above that, we have room all the way up to 1263. We're really just going to look at CleanSpark today. They had that big news. It was fantastic. Now, as long as it stays above, as long as price can stay above, you know, $9, we're feeling pretty good about CleanSpark. And preferably, it doesn't break this gray line here, this ascending trend line here. As long as it doesn't break that, stays above $9, doesn't break this trend line. And we break this yellow one first, we've got room all the way up to that mid ATR band up at the 1067, especially if we get over the 20 day moving average or the 21 day. Sorry, it was a 21 day. All right, that's clean spark. That's what's going on. They've increased their exahash by 3.2. They're over 26 exahash. What is, uh, let's, let's, let's go look at what is Mara currently hashing with. Uh, so Mara currently hashing at just over 31, almost 32, actually not just over 31, almost 32 exahash. So they are slowly creeping up on uh, Mara there. They've overtaken uh, Core Scientific, but they did that last month in July. Uh, Riot, uh, they've overtaken Riot now, which is at 23.3, or at least it was in July. I think they may have increased it since then. To some point, they might be at 24 now. Uh, but CleanSpark uh, has the highest um, 
installed hash rate? Probably now, honestly. They, they, they might, oh, if Mara, you know, isn't, you know, staying as efficient uh, as they could be, uh, which is not that efficient for Mara, to be honest. It's, like, it's really low. It doesn't matter. They might actually end up hashing more than Mara this month if Mara doesn't stay on top of things here. So CleanSpark may have just put itself in the top spot for operating hash rate. We'll see at the end of the month how well they uh, compare to Mara in terms of average operating hash rate for the month because Mara often um, operates lower than its total hash rate by a large margin. So uh, and CleanSpark generally does not. So they might actually at some point very, very, very soon overtake Mara and become the largest Bitcoin miner in terms of how much hash rate is actually operating consistently for them. That is amazing. CleanSpark is doing great. We've got up 1.5% today. This is not enough up percent for that news. Not enough at all considering uh, how they are trucking along with that. Uh, I wonder if the market is still digesting that uh, big um, that, that big announcement for you know increasing the share count by twice as many that, that the, the market might still be digesting that, might still be a bit angry about that because that was huge news and we should have seen a bigger pop than one percent than just over one percent that's pretty sad actually so uh we'll see we'll see hopefully soon when bitcoin is taking off this will uh send clean spark to the stratosphere that would be pretty fantastic the last thing i want to talk about today tmf we're talking about bonds yeah i know i keep talking about bonds we're talking about the bonds all right bonds Fed rate cut is next Wednesday, right? Next Wednesday is the Fed rate cut. I have started taking a position in bonds as a result waiting for that rate cut. When we get the 0.25 cut, we should be expecting something like a few percent jump on TMF pretty much immediately. So the rule of thumb, that's not like a law or anything, but the rule of thumb is that bonds tend to go up, the long dated bonds, especially the 20 year, tends to go up about 10% for every 1% decrease in the rate right in the fed funds rate so tmf is a triple leverage of that so they should see about 30 percent for every one percent or if we or in this case uh, 0.25 so if we take a 30 and we divide that by four because it's a you know, we'll get a fourth we should be seeing about a 7.5 percent increase in tmf next week as a result of that rate cut 7.5 percent on a 62 dollar stock is what did I say 7.5%? I did. Should move it up to about 66 to $67, which we're looking at about four to five dollar move up from where it currently is. Now it's not huge, but it's you know better than nothing. Uh, so I am in this and I am expecting to see sometime by the you know early next year or uh, to mid next year at least a 30 to 50 percent jump on this stock, which would put it up close to a hundred dollars per share for TMF. And that is what I'm doing there. That is my additional play that I'm working on here outside of Bitcoin miners and outside of a few other things. I've also got some other exciting things I want to talk to the channel about here coming up in the future. I'm still refining it though. So when uh, the, you'll be the first ones to know when I'm ready to talk about that. So stay tuned. Uh, we've got a lot of exciting things coming up in the future. So that's all I've got for you today. Please like, comment, subscribe, share this video if you found it entertaining or informative. Check out the Trade Cave store link in the description as well as the channel bio and have a profitable day.